What's good, y'all? Solomon here. I hope you guys are having a great day. Before we get into today's main video, I thought that I would mention uh, I'm giving out a 30% off discount code for the month of June on both of my online courses, including the Ponziani opening and the Hippopotamus Defense. So if you're interested in one of these courses or both, all you got to do is go down to the description below or the pinned comment. Go to the link there and uh, yeah, whether you're interested in the Hippo or the Ponziani or both, plug in the discount code June 2024 and you will receive 30% off um, on those courses. See y'all in the main video. Let's get it. If you're trying to find a response against the move of E4, there's a lot of mainstream good chess opening options that you can go with. I mean, this includes the Carl Kahn defense, Sicilian, French, Scandinavian, the list goes on. But what I will say is that even though these openings are good and I myself have played them and I've even made videos about them on this channel, usually the opponent that plays E4 is somewhat prepped for it. And even if they haven't prepared theory, right? They've seen it because something like the Carl Kahn defense, something like the Sicilian, something like the Scandinavian, these are just unavoidable. If you play E4, you're going to run into them all the time. What if you want to take your opponent out of prep though? What if your opponent studies theory like crazy? They've studied hundreds, if not thousands of hours. They've played thousands of games against these openings and you want to take them out of their prep in the first move. Well, one of the ways that you can do this is by playing the modern defense. This isn't the only way. There's other rare options, the Owens defense, the Nimzowicz defense, um, the Alakine's defense is very rare as well. But the modern defense with G6 is, is, you know, what I'm finding as of late. I mean, just an underrated option that E4 players simply are not prepped for much of the time. And, and, and that's just where it starts. Right? I can speak from firsthand experience. I played E4 in tournament play growing up as white for probably around seven years. And I don't even know if I studied the modern defense one time. I'm honestly not sure if I did. Maybe I'd study it for a couple minutes really quickly. That was about it. I had no idea that the modern defense can lead into things like the pterodactyl defense, the hippo defense that can transpose into a Peartz or a King's Indian. You can play a Norwegian rat, a Norwegian rat gambit, right? You can, you can play a neo-modern defense, right? There, there's so many different things that we can see coming out of the modern. And in today's video, we're adding another option that you have as a modern defense player. Okay. And this is going to be against uh, the Averbach variation from white. Okay. This is one of white's main setups. Uh, when they see something like the modern, the modern defense, we're not taking control of the center. We're letting white take control of it. But then from there, right, we try to go after that center and really create counterattacking chances for the rest of the game. Now, if we see a move like D4 or a move like E4, you can play the modern defense. That's what's so great about it. You can play G6 against either D4 or E4, and oftentimes they transpose into each other. An E4 player can play D4 or a D4 player can play E4. Here, if we see a move like C4, all right, Bishop G7, Knight C3. One option that we have is playing D6 and against E4. Um, one option that you have here, very rare, most people have probably never heard of it in their life, knight c6 with the Koto variation. Now, uh, the Koto variation uh, with knight c6, if you look on Lee Chess, if you look on the database, out of the top 12 moves, which is what it shows, knight c6, this move right here, is the best performing move for black. Best performing move. Now, on this channel, I've covered the hippopotamus defense a ton. And if you're going to play the hippo, you can play E6, right? But even if you are a hippo player, this video might be of use to you. It might be right. Um, because maybe you're, maybe you're concerned about seeing a four pawn center. Maybe you don't want to play against the four pawn center. Maybe you want to kind of break things up before that can even happen. One of the ways to do this is by playing E5, kind of a neo modern defense idea. The other one is by playing nice E6. Right, playing IC6, uh, we're now in that 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 Kotov uh, variation kind of setup, and we're immediately putting pressure on D4. And in this video, which again, this is the best performing move in online chess for Black, out of the top 12 options um, in the in this position, we're going to be looking at the top three options, the top three moves that White plays against this, statistically speaking. Now, surprisingly, 
D5 is not the most popular or even second most popular option. This is the third most uh, common move that we see. So this is what we're going to be covering last. Let's first cover the move of bishop e3. By the way, you got to defend your pawn or push your pawn unless you just want to lose it. We're putting pressure on it. Let's say white does defend it with bishop e3. This is the most popular move. My recommendation is e5. Notice the amount of pressure that we have again on that pawn. We have three pieces hunkering down on it. White here needs to make a choice. They just do. I mean, d5 now is the most popular move. Uh, but if you just leave it there, if you don't defend it, we're going to win a pawn and potentially even fork your bishop and your knight, right? Something like uh, taking on e5. Here, I would I would usually not take with the d pawn because I'd be worried about queen takes queen. But here we can take not with the king, which loses our castling rights, by the way, but with the knight. And we're okay. I mean, maybe a move like knight e6 on the way, fighting for some dark score control. Uh, I wouldn't sit here and say either side is is winning this. I mean, there's they're still a long game of chess ahead with queens off the board. That's one way that you could play this, right? That's that's one way that you can go about it. Um, if a move like knight f3, I'm just not impressed with that move. I mean, in this kind of, you know, Kotov uh, approach, anytime we see knight f3, we're going to look to pin that that knight to the queen pretty much anytime, okay, including here, which, sure, you got an extra defender, but now it's pinned to your queen, which is also a defender. So, Knight f3 there is just not the best move. Knight ge2 is actually a much better option for white because now if we're bringing the bishop there, f3 and our bishop's just getting kicked around. But we're not going to do that. We can take on d4. And after knight takes, we can play knight ge7. Maybe play a quick f5. Maybe castle and then play f5. We're using a flank pawn to put pressure on white's center. And if you want to take that pawn, that's fine. I mean, we could play a move like knight takes f5. You can take all you want. We have more replacements on the way. And in this case, a monster bishop pair. Looking at the move e5, right? Let's say white doesn't defend it with a move like knight f3, which again, isn't very good uh, because we can have bishop g4. If something like knight e2, we can capture on d4. What if they push? Well, in this case, you know, you could play knight d4, um, but I'm going to recommend knight c e7. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend this move, bishop d3. These are moves that we see all the time in online chess. Okay, So I'm not just showing you moves that you're barely going to see. Statistically speaking, white will play bishop e3, and they'll look towards a d5 push. In this case, I personally like f5, just going crazy. Now, notice what we're doing here. We're playing f5 and then knight f6. In the king's Indian defense, we throw a knight out pretty quickly, and then at some point we got to play knight h5 or knight e8. To, to help, right, to help that pawn on f7 push to f5. But in this case, we're just going to do it right away and then look to keep developing. Now, it is worth mentioning white can take the pawn on f5. And in this case, I personally kind of like taking with the g pawn. I'm not too worried about queen h5. I'm going to move my king over. Sure, I don't have castling rights, but I do have two pawns side by side that can push whenever the heck they want. They're very well defended. White can't do much about it in terms of forcing them to move. And a move like knight f6 could come on the way, kicking that queen around. But if you don't like that, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Knight takes f5, very, very solid option. If the bishop takes, we can take with our bishop. That's fine. From this point, you know, develop the knight, castle king side. We're just playing chess. This is a solid game for black. Now, let's say white doesn't take and they play a move like f3. All right, knight f6. If you want to move the knight, we can castle. If queen d2 c5 performs very well you know in a position like this uh, with the current pawn structure our pawns are kind of facing towards the king side so we're going to be looking towards a king side attack at some point right white on the other hand they're facing the queen side with their pawn chain so a move like c5 here at some point for white is something that they want to aim for so let's just play c5 ourselves now you know, we're going to be looking at en passant, but it is worth mentioning. Let's say white doesn't en passant and they castle queenside. Let's start going after that king. Let's play a move like a6. Against king b1, we can play bishop d7, play rook b8. We're putting so much tension on that b5 square, and we're going to look to break that open. If a4, we can now take on e4. And here's the idea. If you capture with your bishop, b5 is playable because the bishop's no longer covering. If you take with the knight, a4 just hangs. So the best move for white, and it's not even close, is taking back with the pawn. But now we have knight g4. Um, 
We have pressure on h2, which is good to keep in mind. We're threatening knight f2, forking both of the opponent's rooks. And uh, yeah, black here with a slight advantage. Now, if white uh, does decide to opposant, in this case, we want to take back with the pawn, right? Because if we take back with the knight, at least from a practical standpoint, d5 now for the rest of this game cannot be defended. This is a hole, right? A hole in chess is when no pawn can defend it. White is going to be looking at the square. On top of that, this, this pawn's backwards. No pawn can support it. If it pushes, it's not going to be supported by anything. So because of that, we want to take with the pawn to both cover d5 and also prep d5 ourselves in just a few moves. Now, for example, let's say rook d1. All right, let's play bishop e6. One, two, three, four, five pawn slash pieces, all covering that d5 square. We really are looking to push that pawn pretty quickly here. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, let's just say something like bishop c2 white here, just going, you know what, I'm going to try to win that pawn. We can take on e4. Now, if you do take back, uh, you know, let's say with your pawn, knight g4 is a good option. Again, just going after this bishop like crazy. And, and you know, white might be thinking here, let me take a pawn, right? I lose my bishop, but then I win black's bishop. But here's the issue. On top of the fact that we could take on c2 with check, we can play rook a d8. And you can take this knight all you want because this is a checkmate threat and this is a checkmate threat due to the fact that this king has absolutely nowhere to run. The computer move here is knight d5 against that. We can take. And you again, you can take the knight all you want. We now take on e4. At this point, I'm just, I mean, this is just kind of an interesting position to look at. Um, again, two checkmate threats right and if you play bishop takes e4 you do stop both of those but now you leave the d1 square open black has won this game so you know taking with the pawn there it's not the best move knight g4 is a great way to go about this we're putting pressure on c4 if you defend it knight c8 why not right this might look passive but it's it's holding our position together sometimes in chess you need defensive pieces not just offensive um and uh, you can't really kick our knight around because we're going to play queen h4 check and once you block queen h5, you cannot take unless you want to lose your rook. And uh, I mean, white here, just a, an incredibly awkward position. Their king cannot castle queenside. Um, you can't castle kingside either because of our rook pouncing down on the f1 square, not to mention our kingside presence. Great game for black. Going back, if a move like knight takes e4, let's take. If you take, uh, you know, with the pawn here, um, we have d5 options. We'll get into that in a moment. If the bishop takes, right? I mean, d5 is a great move. If you do take with the pawn, again, you can still play d5. White can take all they want, but we have so much reinforcement on that square. And at the end of this, black here just with a with a slight edge. Our king's a little bit safer. We have a passed pawn on e5. It is isolated, but white's current piece placement is just not well suited to go after it. And it's also very well defended. Um, I would say also we, we just have the, the edge in activity at the end of the day here. So... Uh, all I have to say, I mean, looking at this move in nice e6 with the with the Koto variation, um, bishop e3, if you see that move, right, you got to play uh, e5 there and uh, yeah, black there with a very fun game ahead. Kind of a king's Indian defense style, but you're getting f5 in before knight f6, which saves you a ton of time. Knight f3 is the second most popular move. I'm not impressed with this. I don't think this is a good option. Black plays bishop g4, and again, we're threatening to take this knight and then take on d4. Even, I mean, if it's our move, we could just take on d4 right now. So white here needs to figure something out. And uh, if you push your pawn to d5, knight d4, centralize that guy, bishop e2. We could snatch off that bishop, um, play a move like c6, just start chipping away at that center. Kind of a check pierce idea, giving this queen some leverage as well. If you take, we take back. I mean, I could see this B file being a great spot uh, to put our rook, to put some pressure on B2. We already have a, a fantastically placed fianchetto bishop on that on that dark square diagonal. And um, yeah, I mean, just just a just a great game to work with here. You can play a move like knight f6, castle and king side, knight d7, looking at those dark squares as well. Um, dead even position, according to the engine, but... Uh, at least for myself, like being a modern defense player and liking positions like this, uh, this is, I mean, this is just, a, just, this is just a fun, fun game to work with. And, and when you're playing the modern defense, you're going to have the edge and comfortability, right? Cause you're, you're facing these kinds of positions all the time. If Bishop E3, E5, let's strike in the center. If you take, in this case, we can take with the pawn. And since our Rook is connected, let's take with the Rook, 
that's great for us. We have a, we have a solid game here. Um, you know, this night could also get busy at some point as well. Let's say we see a move like D5. Knight D4 is a good move. Okay, not the only move. I mean, um, knight knight E7 is 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 solid. Taking on F3 is also a solid move here. Um, but you can play the move of knight D4, right? Uh, looking to really you know put more pressure on that knight. If you do see something like bishop e2, we can take on f3, now play c5. Notice the amount of support this knight has. If you want to take it, we could take with either pawn. I kind of like e takes just so that the scope of this bishop gets a little bit further instead of you know it being locked in by two pawns. Now it's just one. e5 also becomes a spot where our bishop could drop in at some point, um, as well as one of our other pieces, like maybe our knight gets busy and finds a spot on e5. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just overall, uh, you know, great game there. And uh, yeah, I mean, white can play the move of, of D takes on C6, but we, we, we take towards the center of the board and we have two defenders on that knight. And again, a move like rook B8 here, a move like, you know, maybe knight E7 uh, so that that bishop can keep scope on that knight. Uh, castling kingside, F5 ideas, such a flexible position to play with, which is what the modern defense is all about. And the, and the Kotal variation um, is just one of the many ways that we can go about that. Now, the third most popular move. So again, let's just let's just cover it again. So if you see the move of bishop e3, e5 is a great move. If you see knight f3, you can play bishop g4 and then look towards an e5 push. What if we see d5 immediately? I'm surprised that this move isn't played more than, than it is, in all honesty. Um, and there's a lot of moves here that the engine likes. If you like knight e5, go for it. If you like knight b8, go for it. I, I personally don't like knight b8 or knight e5. Um, I like the move of knight d4, and, and, and this does perform well uh, for black. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, if something like bishop e3, c5, right? In this case, why not keep direct access on that knight as well as this pawn and give this queen some leverage as well? And there's a lot of different things that we can see here. Okay, I would say the best move by far is knight g e2, but this can be a hard move to find. I mean, let's say you take the knight, we take back, black's just better here. Let's say you play something like knight b5, a6. Knight a3 is just ugly. It's just, it's just not fun to look at if you're white, but it is the best move. Because if you take on d4, we play queen a5 with check. The only way you can block this is with the queen, in which case we take and thank you for the free hanging knight on d4. So if you don't want to, I mean, if you don't want to run into this and just, you know, get, just be down a piece for a pawn with your opponent having a bishop here, I mean, you just got to play king e2. And then we drop back, right? Why didn't we play queen b6 right away? Because we could play queen a5, pretty much force king e2 unless white wants to lose a piece, then play queen b6. And obviously that king on e2 is great for us. It's, it's prohibiting white's development and they have a king on e2. So yeah, I mean, we'll take that. If something like knight f3... Again, bishop g4. If you see that knight, pin it. Uh, you know they can they can try to slow things down with bishop e2. But here we can take maybe a move like queen b6. Just just keep putting the pressure on white. This is not a comfortable comfortable position for white to work with. Um, if white takes immediately, let's just get the knight the heck out of there, right? In this case, we can't take towards the center because white has two attacking pieces on our knight. We only have one defender, but we can get our knight out of there. And then you know if you see something like knight f3, pterodactyl defense type fashion here take on c3 white here with double isolated and isolated pawns on the queen side play move like knight f6 um queen a5 is an option going forward just putting pressure on c3 and it's interesting because our dark squares are a little bit weakened by giving up that bishop but white's pawn structure in return is just absolutely terrible going back to c5 uh, if we do see the best move here which is knight ge2 i kind of like the move of queen b6 this performs well we're both defending the knight on d4 and also putting pressure on b2. If you see something like queen d2, f5 is a very fun option here. Although being, just keep in mind that by playing f5, you are weakening e6, right? So you do got to look out for something like this in the future. Of course, it is defended by our bishop, but just be aware that e6 is a gaping hole that you got to be uh, that you got to be careful about. But yeah, I mean, it's just hard for white to take advantage of this. We have such a good grip on e5 with our bishop and our pawn on d6. And if, and if you take on f5, I mean, that's just not going to get the job done. We capture back with our knight. There's a lot of stuff that we can do here. I mean, you could just throw the knight out to f6. You could also, you know, knight h6, knight f7, knight e5, start going for, you know, start start putting some pressure on c4 at some point. So again, just, just, just remember, right? So we see the move d4. We can play g6. 
fi and keto are bishop, d6, and then here, e5. That's a good option, right? That's kind of a neo-modern uh, option that um, you know is very playable and fun. But so is this move of knight c6. And knight c6 is the top performing move here out of all the moves that the database shows you. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, black wins the majority of these games following knight c6. One more reminder, right? If we see bishop to e3, let's play e5. If you see uh, knight f3, you can pin that knight right away. I mean, that's just not in this position. That's just in general. And if d5, um, there's, a, there's a lot of options that you could go with there, but my favorite is, is knight t4 and then supporting that centralized piece with a c5 push. I'll see y'all in the next one. What's up, y'all? Solomon here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, appreciate y'all a ton. And if you haven't subscribed before, uh, you know, just a, a quick reminder, uh, you know, to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell as well. If you're, if you're wanting more content like this to help you improve in your game and all that kind of stuff. And uh, real quickly as well, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my Patreon uh, supporters for the month of June in 2024. I appreciate y'all a ton. You guys are helping me do this full time. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you haven't checked it out before, I highly recommend that you go check out some of the benefits that you gain by becoming a member. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace. Peace.